Council of uh, National Assembly on the ground number eight, where it is alleged that uh, the Deputy President violated Section 132 of the Penal Court. So maybe we can be told a lot more about um, whether there was any report made to the relevant authorities as far as this charge is concerned. Senator Newton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to seek some clarifications from uh, the Honorable Mutuse. Uh, very fast, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first of all, what led him uh, to, if he did, to think of auditing the wealth of the Deputy President? Was he auditing institutions? And if he was auditing the presidency, would he kindly tell us also about the wealth of the President? Number two, Mr. Speaker, who did this particular motion for Honorable Mutuse? And why I ask that, Mr. Speaker, is because uh, every time he's asked a question, he says, I think so, I believe so. Uh, he does not give convincing reasons, in my view, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, there is, uh, he has listed several companies. And these companies, uh, he, upon cross examination, he has uh, said repeatedly for each of them that he has no problem with the companies. Apart from saying that he thought, again, he thought that uh, uh, they were, there was an intention to use them for money laundering and some other corrupt activities, Mr. Speaker. So, exactly what is it a crime to have? in his understanding, to own companies for the Deputy President or any other Kenyan, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when you look at uh, the affidavit made by one Jomo, Mr. Njomo, about acquisition of Olive Garden's uh, hotel, with a promise, it is alleged, that the Deputy President would uh, buy the same later. Senator Ojenda. Honorable Senators, condense your thoughts. You only have two minutes within which to seek the clarifications. And uh, both teams you. kindly note down the questions so that once the Senators are, are done raising, we'll come to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I want to ask uh, the witness, Mutuse. Uh, you have been taken to great lengths in on the ownership or the shareholding of the 22 companies that you have associated uh, uh, the deputy president with. I want you to just clarify why you included the 22 companies in your impeachment. You set out allegations on several companies. Clarify one, you refer to Olive Gardens Hotel, you refer to the, again, Vipingo Beach Resort in Kilifi County, you set out the CR12 of both. Now I want you to just tell us, or clarify, the significance of the inclusion of these two companies. Just clarify that. On the ownership of Queen's Gate serviced apartments, you also seem to raise a number of issues. I want you to also clarify uh, the ownership of Queen's Gate serviced apartments and why you attribute the questions. You asked several questions by council on Queen's Gate. I want you to make a clarification. But let's go to the other question, Mr. Mutuse. In charge number one, you have referred to the obligation... Senator Mungatana. Sante Bwana Speaker. Mimi nilikuwa nataka kumuliza mweshmiwa mtuse 
mbunge wa kibwezi mashariki atufafanulie wakati ambapo mheshimiwa makamu wa rais alipokuwa anazunguka na kusema anapigania haki za murima yeye kama mbunge wa kibwezi mashariki na kama mbunge wa kutoka sehemu ya jimbo gatuzi la makueni je alijisikia ama alijihisi kwamba anabaguliwa ama anawekwa kando katika nchi hii ya Kenya tueleze vizuri tuelewe asante fafanua senator enokombo Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I will have two clarifications to seek from Mheshimiwa um, Mutuse. But because my my leader, Senator Governor James Orengo, opened this session with a verse from the Bible, I will also read one from the Bible. The book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 1. You shall not spread a false report. You shall not join hands with a wicked man to be a malicious witness. That is the Bible. The Mutisa I want to know from Mr. Mutusa one is this impeachment motion really and truly your motion? I ask that question, Mr. Speaker, because on all accounts, the witness is unable to prove anything. Is this your motion, or are you called to just sign a motion, then to come and defend it here? Secondly, in the oath of office for the deputy president, it is required of him to diligently serve the people of the Republic of Kenya in the office of the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. The people that reside in the mountain, the Mount Kenya region, are Kenyans. What is so wrong with a deputy president, a state officer, in defending people from a region in this country and then coming to defend other people in Nairobi and other people in other regions? What is so wrong? What is impeachable about that defense? I thank the speaker. Senator Veronica. Honorable Mutuse, just to clarify a few issues. One, are there any charges for money laundering that have been uh, preferred against the Deputy President? That's one. And then to confirm whether um, the Asset Recovery Agency, the case of the Asset Recovery Agency that was before uh, Justice Esther Minor, was fully resolved using the consent order. Those two clarifications. Senator Olekina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, I need to seek two clarifications. And one of them is from the Council of the Deputy President. This is in regards to the, the allegation on ground four in terms of <clears throat> the consent that was reached upon for the 200 million. I heard that there was a consent after the deputy president filed an appeal of the case which I believe the judgment still stand. Do we have that consent? And in what circumstances led to that consent being um, agreed upon and the money returned, the 200 million shillings returned to the Deputy President, yet the High Court had already determined that that money were proceeds of corruption. Was it threats? Number two, I'd like to seek some clarification on the concept of shareholding. Is a coalition agreement a company? Is 
Kenya government a company? Because I was still not very clear about those two issues. Because we've been invited to interpret the coalition agreement of Kenya Kwanzaa. Yet, every time, based on the evidence presented, all I could hear is the deputy president talking about people. So are people now part of the coalition agreement? And is the coalition agreement a company or is it a coalition agreement registered with the registrar of political parties? Senator Meth. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. I also want to uh, get to understand from a clarification from Honorable Mutuse on uh, the assertion that you made on ground number, um, well, on this accusation that you say that His Excellency Rigadi Gashagwa acquired a dairy farm in Nyandarwa County, whether there is any evidence in record that he has a dairy farm in Nyandarwa, either the title number of the, of the land or even the, you know, a, a photograph. I've seen you uh, put photograph of uh, hotels. Either a photograph of cows or whatever you'd have in record. Number two, I would also want to know from the Honorable Mwengi Mutuse, on this matter that you say the people of Kenya feel that uh, they have been left out, whether there is any evidence in record of people who have complained to the National Cohesion and Integration Commission complaining against the conduct of the Deputy President in as far as uh, the issues that you've raised. Finally, there is... Uh, one um, uh, property of the estate of Didito Kashagwa that uh, is referred to as Kuruitu, and I think you have adduced uh, the list of uh, the, the directors. In your submissions, you said that the only one person who is an executor and is a, a, a beneficiary would be Deputy President Rigadi Kashagwa. In that will, did you see that part of the, uh, the people who are beneficiaries are the executors? So, uh, one of the three, or all the three executors, are also beneficiaries. And in the regards to what you have adduced in the Kruitu uh, uh, property, it is actually one of, the, uh, one of the executors, not the deputy president, who actually bought that particular property. Senator Chris Telasiga. Thank you so much, Speaker. I'm very, very glad that um, the Bible has been cited because I have a couple of verses of my own I would like to also start my contribution with. I take it to Proverbs 17, which I just read yesterday, in fact, Speaker, which say in 14 and 15. 14 says, starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam, so drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. 15, acquitting the guilty and condemning the innocent, the Lord detests them both. And I'd like to maybe insert, instead of the Lord, I would like to insert the Senate, detest them both, and we have a very upward hill task. My question goes to the witness. In his motion, um, he has used the Oxford Advanced Dictionary to define gross misconduct. I was just curious to find out why the Oxford Dictionary and not maybe uh, a relevant Kenyan law that defines if he has one, or perhaps Black's Law Dictionary, which I know um, all legal counsels also um, rely upon. Thank you. Senator Gataya, more for you. Well, Speaker, I, I want to seek clarification from the counsel for uh, the Deputy President. I have seen uh, my brain, the photos and the uh, utterances for his exit the President. I need to get the, the relationship between what is before us and the present for this matter. So could, can you please explain what is the relationship between what he has provided for the President and what is before us as a House? Senator Karungo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My questions directed to Moshimiwa Mutuse. Welcome to the Senate, the Upper House. And my question is, you said the Deputy President is tribal because he spoke Kikuyu in Nairobi. Are you aware of Article 7 of the Constitution that says the state should promote local languages? Are you also aware of Article 27 that says no one should be discriminated on the language they speak? Are you also aware of Article 44 of the Constitution 
that says that every person has the right to use the language of their choice. But again, would you make the same complaint if we spoke in sign language? Uh, the next question is, the Deputy President has been talking about shares in government, Serikali, which we have been shown that the shareholding and the shares were uh, uh, signed by the government officials who are in government. He never talked about the nation, which is Taifa, shareholding of the country. So I would want you to tell me whether you know the difference between the two. And lastly, um, you have given us a lot of documents, even bank statements, and even payment vouchers. I know you as honorable member of parliament, not necessarily a government agency. How did you access these documents? Yet you know the Supreme Court of Kenya has indicated it is wrong to steal evidence or to unlawfully obtain evidence. We would want you to, to, to give us uh, that um, indication. And also, you said the deputy president was in a company of senators in Nairobi County. I was actually one of them. Kindly refer to Article 96 of the Constitution. Senator Moses Kajuang. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my clarification is on um, paragraph 47 on the charge sheet. The National Assembly alleges that the Deputy President has several proxy companies, and one of them is Agrobrick Investment Limited. In paragraph 48, the National Assembly alleges that Bavika Nathalal Hirani is a proxy of His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa. Could the National Assembly provide some evidence because ground seven is framed as serious reasons to believe that the deputy president has committed a crime? Could there be some evidence to convince the House that there could be reasons to believe so? Finally, on paragraph 74, the National Assembly alleges that the Deputy President has openly sabotaged the state's efforts in agriculture. Mr. Speaker, I'm a member of the Agriculture Committee, and I would be interested to get the evidence that there's been connivance, there's been cartelism, and there's been an association between the Deputy President with the cartels that have frustrated the development of the tea sector. Because the tea sector goes beyond the mountain, it goes all the way to Kisi, and areas that neighbor Homer Bay County. And finally, which is this cooperative society whose name has been withheld? Could that information be provided to the Senate? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Robert. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my clarification is to uh, His Excellency, the Deputy President, um, on the issue of um, the property of the deceased. Uh, my question is, does the deceased have any children? Are they of sound mind? And uh, because it, it appears as though they are not involved in any of the management of the estate of the deceased, and that is the big question, and possibly a clarity that we would like to have from you. Thank you. Senator Okongo. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I want to seek clarification on what is at uh, page 15, uh, page 15, paragraph 41. <clears throat> there is uh, the allegation being made that in the past two years, His Excellency the President has amazed Ayumonga's property portfolio, estimated at 5.2 billion. I was trying to follow your answers during cross examination. And I don't know whether you were trying to drop this allegation or if you want to still maintain it, I want you to give a proper clarification that links the person against whom you have brought the motion, that is the stupid president, with that allegation of 5.2 billion. I didn't. I didn't quite see you make a clear clarification 
in support of that allegation. If you could kindly clarify for me. Thank you. Senator Murango. Asante sana mustaki speaker. Nigetaka kumuliza mweshmiwa mutuse kwa sababu kampuni nyingi ambazo ameolodesha pale kama ushaindi kwamba ni za watoto wake eh, naibu wa rais. Nigetaka kashagua. Wewe mea, kwa sababu umesema umefanya kazi kama wakili. Lazima huu likuwa unikuwa nafanya kazi kupitia kampuni. Ilikuwa ni kwa ya ulagai ukiwa na bambako. Kwa ma wale watoto ambao umeodhoresha pale. Wote walitengeneza kampuni, kampuni. Ili kulagai pesa kupitisha, kupitisha zile kampuni. Swali langu la pili. Ni kwamba. Katika stakambadhi ambazo zime, zimeletwa pale. Zinaonyesha kwamba walio kuwa. Wanafaa kupata mguwa wa shares katika kampuni. Kuna wale walikuwa nafaa kupata asri miya theradhini. Na ile mirandi ilikuwa inaenda ilikuwa inafaa kuenda Western Kenya. Haikuwa imeorodheshwa kunja na rombi ya mali pali pengine popote. Unasikia kwamba ulikuwa umegatuliwa kwa sababu umetoka makueni. Na ile mirandi haikuwa inakuja makueni. Asante sana Mr. Speaker. Senator Sifuna. Honorable Speaker, unfortunately, I hear that uh, the Bible verses have been exhausted. But uh, I, see, I seek a clarification from my friend, uh, Council Masharia, who has helped me to understand complex legal issues before. Uh, Council, what, uh, because you have presented a coalition agreement to explain this issue of shareholding, where does that coalition agreement leave members of political parties that are not signatories to the Kenya Kwanzaa agreements? That is the first question I would want uh, clarification to. Number two, what would be the place of a coalition agreement that is manifestly unconstitutional or illegal? And the, the, the page that you referred us to uh, includes securing positions that are supposed to be uh, competitively filled. For instance, the, the, the position of uh, permanent secretaries. Is it your position that in fact these advertisements that we see in the newspapers are just a charade to cover up uh, things that have already been concluded in coalition agreements such as the Kenya Kwanza agreement that you have exhibited here. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Senator Mundege. Asanti para speaker. Swalilangu ni kwa mwesimu wa mutuse. Wakati Deputy President kuna semekana aliongea umbaya wa njanji maina. E, ndiyo tuweze kuangalia kuna njia yeyote kwa sababu kila mtu wako na uhuru. Ya kuenda kotini, ama kuita waze, ama kutumana. E, kuna kitu njanji maina alifanya ndiyo tuweze kuelewa juu ya file Deputy President aliongea umbaya wa njanji. Wa, wa, wa uyu njanji. Asanti para speaker. Senator Fokilefe. Asante, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Niko na swala kwa kutaka kufafanuliwa na wakili wa naibu rais. Uh, katika kosla kwanza lile ambalo lilikuwa limeandikwa hii gross violation iko uh, katika kipengele cha 15 katika hii particulars of allegations kinasema kwamba mimi mnajua msimamo wangu ya kwamba watoto wakiwa wengi Kuna wale kwanza akuangaliwa. Si mnajua. Alapu anaendelea kuongea kwamba chakula iko jikoni. Karibu kuiva. Watoto ni wengi. Chakula ni kidogo. Iko wana watoto ya nyumbani. Na iko na watoto ya jirani. Iko na mna hiyo. Nataka fafanue uh, kiswahili hichi kina maanisha nini kutoka kwa huyo uh, uh, client waki 
Asante Bwana Speaker. No, Honorable Senators, allow the parties to respond to those clarifications. Starting with the team from the National Assembly, and then we move to the team from the Deputy President. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If I may, the Honorable Senator Ososi had no question directed to me. Senator Nutu, what led me to audit the wealth of the Deputy President? I, I'm just doing my work as a member of Parliament for 94 and 95 of the Constitution. Part of my work is to oversight state officers. The Deputy President is one such state officer. I set myself to draft and present an impeachment motion, and I needed to support that impeachment motion with information. Nothing else. Why didn't I also audit the President? I was not intending to bring an impeachment motion against the President. If in future another member wants to bring an impeachment motion against the President, I believe they will be at liberty to also do their work in the manner they deem. Who did this particular motion? You are truly speaking before you. Mwangi Mutusa, the member of parliament for Kibwezi West, did the particular motion. You have listed several companies. Yes, indeed, you have listed several companies. And just to clarify, there are those that companies that I was led by advocates for His Excellency Rikadi Gashagwa, and I said we have no problem with them. But also, there are companies that we have issues with, and we have stated the companies that we have issues with. And you would know, because you have handled impeachment motions in the past, that uh, just because we do not have an issue with one particular company does not mean that uh, those that we have been proved also fall with it. But also importantly, why we listed these companies is also to demonstrate character. Character in the sense that uh, if you have one company that is a construction company, then why do you have three others that are dormant? Why don't you use just that one that is a construction company to do your construction work? So it was also to demonstrate a web, an intricate web of activity to hide and conceal And that's why we listed those companies. The affidavit 